Welcome you guys. Um, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Um, today I wanted to share some kind of click I had. Um, yeah, I mean, it's something that progressed, I guess, but um, it was about powerfulness. Um, yesterday, some people were uh, got some comments where people were comparing spiritual experiences to doing psychedelics and all these things, and then how um they you know you have access to a certain experience and then uh you know you can go back to it as many times as you want but you know sometimes we're not in a space of powerfulness we're vulnerable and uh, we cannot do it because we're not strong enough to do it but when we are strong we can do it so um it was sharing this thought current and then i thought like i want to share um i want to share the kind of realizations and the experiences i got uh, while being with Swamiji regarding this and and how to um, how to understand this and how to cognize it and 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 grow from there. Um, one thing that is fundamental is that higher frequency experiences strengthen your nervous system. So, the more and more you experience powerful cognitions, the more your nervous system becomes strong which does not allow you to fall as deep and as fast into lower spaces, um, lower frequencies of, of existence. So that's one scale. One of the issues when you take external stuff, um, you might have some experiences which are not ordinary as per your experience of life. But the thing is that the main reason why we don't have these experiences in the normal life is because our nervous system is not able to handle it. So when you force a certain kind of higher experience onto you by taking these things, you actually damage your nervous system, your brain and your body. You're playing with the chemistry of your body to give yourself a kick, a kind of an experience, a high. But um, as far as my understanding and my experience goes, um, that is not the, the, the reality. Meaning experiencing a high has nothing to do with experiencing bliss. Bliss is not a high. Bliss is beyond ups and downs. It's a different space. Um, we feel that because we're too used to be operating from a low space and we feel that is normal, the moment we experience something high, we feel, you know, that's, that is it. But as far as my experience goes, that is not it. And it is beyond that also. So bliss is not excitement, is not joy, is not happiness. Of course, these, these experiences can happen, but bliss is beyond that. And the more we... It, have a glimpse of bliss the more it stays with us and the more it becomes more and more in a general happening in our life until it becomes a permanent cognition a full cognition and that's what i wanted to share today i wanted to talk about what is powerfulness see we use the word powerfulness but we all have our own understandings of what it is um, like i shared for me uh, bliss which is the the manifestation of powerfulness is beyond ups and downs so i do not consider excitement happiness or joy to be bliss bliss is beyond that um, it is something different it's a different nature uh, totally itself and but one thing i wanted i had some kind of a i don't know kind of a third eye vision about um, how could i explain what is powerfulness to somebody if somebody is asking me what is powerfulness how do i explain or how do i give a glimpse of what powerfulness is so that i can help the person to uh, distinguish what is powerfulness what is not in their life and this is what i kind of realized see powerfulness is a space beyond sdhts it has no self-doubt no self-hatred no self-denial no guru doubt no guru hatred no guru denial um, and it's really if you take a bird, for instance, the bird can fly. That is his experience. The bird is so powerful about the possibility of flying that it's not even a doubt in his mind that if he just jumps and spread his wings, he will fly. He just knows it. There's no question about it. It's just powerful. He's just so powerful about this possibility. Italian guys, sorry, uh, technical glitch, phone ran out of space. So, um, so yes, uh, another example I can give is when you're healthy, when your body is healthy and all that, you don't have, you're so powerful about your possibility of thinking, of speaking, of eating, of walking, of moving. It's not like it's a space where there's no doubt. It's just a simple, pure expression 
of who you are. So that is the space of powerfulness. That is the, I would say, the how to identify when you are in powerfulness or not powerful. Um, I thought it's very important because, like I said, we have our own understandings, but, uh, but we need to, you know, seek to get that full experience, to get that eternal bliss. Um, another thing before I close the video, uh, it's been something that has been happening, I, I kind of realized that a few years back, but our experience of us changes as it goes until we get established in the pure powerfulness space, in the eternal bliss, the space of Nityananda. Nityananda meaning eternal bliss. Um, when I, for example, met Swamiji, if I use a scale of 100 units of Kundalini for the ultimate experience, I used to operate f with life from uh, five units of Kundalini. And that was my normal life. I knew that life, you know, five units of Kundalini, that is normal life. Suddenly I'm getting an experience. I'm getting initiated or I'm doing meditation and whatever, or I'm doing completion and so a pattern gets completed. Then suddenly, boom, I'm getting a 10 units experience, um, 10 units of Kundalini experience happening. So my life changes. I've never operated with 10 units of Kundalini and suddenly for a certain amount of time, it becomes that. So then if I'm able to remain there, then it's great. Then that becomes my new foundation from which I operate from life. So from now onwards, it is 10 units of Kundalini. If I temporarily fall back, then I know that experiencing 10 units of Kundalini is possible and I'll be seeking and striving to go back to that space. And like that, keeping the seeking alive and the prayerfulness alive and uh, the yearning for the ultimate alive. So like that, we jump from units to units. And then from 10 units of Kundalini, I might have another form of completion happening at some point or initiation or something happens, a darshan of Swamiji, then suddenly, boom, I'm having an experience, 25 units of Kundalini. And like that, we grow. Each time when you have this kind of quantum jump, we feel, oh my God, that is it. But until it becomes powerful, until bliss becomes your powerful experience, like I said, an experience which is just, yeah, I'm blissful. There's no doubt about it. I can never forget that. Whether somebody's yelling at me, whether I'm stuck in traffic, whether I lost something, whether, you know, I'm being harassed by people on social media. When you become powerful, you can never lose that. So like that, we grow, you know, 25 units, 50 units of Kundalini, and then it becomes your normal experience. When I, at some point, if I start to operate from 50 units of Kundalini because I'm having so much completion happening towards so many dimensions in my life, then I no longer remember actually what it's like to operate with five units of Kundalini. This experience is totally made irrelevant. It's gone. It's, it's, it, my, the consciousness is no longer uh, cognizing that. And when I see somebody operating with five units of Kundalini, I'll be like, bro, you're depressed because that's not how you're supposed to live life. And, and so like that we grow, but, but we need to really, we need to also, I feel, we need to really have this capacity to see where we are really. One thing, so one time Samzi was saying, saying in a satsang and it really struck me, he was saying, you need to realize you're falling for you to stop yourself from falling. The moment you realize you're falling, you actually stopped falling. As long as you don't realize you're falling, you can know you cannot raise. You might think you're raising, but if in reality you're falling and you don't and you don't have the courage and uh, to see it and to acknowledge it, then you cannot stop and you know go back towards um, uh, seeking and yearning for the ultimate. So like that, um, it's so important. I really feel yes. As we as we grow with the master, we get trained by the master by Swamiji, and uh, you know we we increase the feeling connection with the guru. Um, the bhakti with the guru in our life, um, we will jump from plateaus to plateaus, we will scale. But where we are, if you, if you fall back down, if at some point you fall back down, that's because you did not experience the ultimate yet power, as a powerful cognition. You might have had a glimpse of it, but uh, you were not able to, the nervous system was not there to the cognitions and the nervous system were not there to be able to hold that experience. So like that, we keep falling. So we should not feel like, oh yeah, I have this, but I cannot do it now. There's no such thing. That is delusion. If you don't have it now, you don't have it, period. From there, seek for it. From there, yearn, intensify the yearning. So as you're saying, the prayerfulness, intense passion with patience. 
so intense passion towards wanting to experience the ultimate and patience so that you don't get frustrated, irritated and give up until you get the actual full experience, until you have the full realization of who you are. And that is why Guru is there. It is to guide us and to show us that not giving up on ourselves um, so that we can experience the ultimate and radiate that ultimate, get fully established in the space of Paramashivam. So yes, that's what I wanted to share with this video with you guys. So I am again very thankful for you guys watching and supporting uh, these videos and helping the channel to grow. So then again, if you did not subscribe, inviting you to subscribe and click that subscribe button and, <laughs> and the bell icon to know on a daily basis I upload so you can expect videos every day. Um, comments, if you have any comments or if you have any questions, I can take that and make another video like I did today with the comment I had yesterday and, um, and share with your friends and like the video. So with this, I'll see you guys soon. Nityandam, be blissful. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes. Om Nityananda.